In this video, I'm going to be discussing simplifying radical expressions other than square roots, which means that its index value is going to be something other than a 2. So in this first example, I have the cubed root of 16. So I'm going to continue pretty much like I did with the square root with one minor adjustment that needs to be made. So I'm going to start with 16. I'm going to find the prime factorization of it. So I'm going to take a 2 out, and that leaves me with an 8. Another 2 makes 4, another 2 makes 2, and one final 2 makes a 1. So what this is going to look like now is I have the cubed root of 1, 2, 3, 4 twos. So 1, 2, 3, 4 twos. So previously when we were finding the square roots of these values, we were taking pairs of numbers out, or twins. In this case, since it's a cubed root, I'm going to be taking triplets out. So for these higher index values, whatever this index value is, that's the number of groupings that you're going to do. So a grouping of three. So once you have a solid grouping of three, that two comes on the outside. We have one two left over. So we're going to rewrite this now as two times the cubed root of two as our final answer. So you'll see the only difference between this and doing a normal square root is that we're going to be, instead of looking for groups of two, looking for groups of more than two, like in this example is a group of three. So let's continue to the next example. Will be the cubed root of 125a to the sixth. So to begin, I'm going to take 125 over here, and I'm going to find the prime factorization of it. So I take a 5 out, and that gives me 25. Take another 5 out and it gives me 5, and take one final 5 out that gives me a 1. So I can rewrite this now as the cube root of a whole big thing. It'll be 5 times 5 times 5, and we have 6 A's. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'll be discussing a little bit later a different way so you don't have to write these variables out every single time. So we're looking for groups of 3. So here appears to be three fives, here's a group of three a's, and here's another group of three a's. And it looks like every single factor that's in here gets to be grouped up and gets to come out, which means since there's nothing left over, we won't need the radical in our answer. So we're going to have a five on the outside times one group of a times another group of a. So we're going to have five a squared. So our final value for simplifying the cubed root of 125a to the sixth is simply 5a squared. In our next example, we see the fourth root of 81x to the sixth. So in order to do this, I'm going to start with this 81 and find the prime factorization of it. So I'll drop that down here, and I'll divide out a 3, because that's prime, and I'll get 27. Divide out another 3, and I have 9. One more 3 gives us 3, and a final 3 gives us 1. So this is one, two, three, it looks like four threes. So I'm going to write, write this whole thing out. So I have one, two, three, four threes, and one, two, three, four, five, six x's. Okay, I'll kind of divide this stuff up so we don't need that anymore. Okay, so I'm looking now, because the index is four, for groups of four. So here are four threes. Here are four x's, and it looks like we've got two x's left over that didn't get put in a group of four, so they're going to be left inside the radical. So, but I have this set of threes that come out, and this set of x's that come out. So, I have on the outside now three x, and then multiply that by the fourth root of x times x, which is x squared. I will say that the thing that I see most students forget to do is when this index is there and it's something other than just a 2, they forget to put it down in their answer. So make sure that when you're taking these higher index values, that you actually carry them down and put it in your answer as well. Our next example is the fifth root of 9y to the power of 10. Well, 9 we know is just going to be 3 times 3, so it's the fifth root of 3 times 3. I'm going to start to change this a little bit. I don't want to write out 10 y's and then make two groups of them because if I'm taking groups of 5, I already know there's going to be two groups of 5 in 10 because 10 divided by 5 makes 2. 
So for the sake of showing it to you, I'll show you one group of five Y's and then another group of five Y's. So these threes, I'm looking for groups of five, but I've only got two threes, so that's not enough. So they're going to stay in here. But this group of five Y's will come out, and this group of five Y's will come out. So on the outside, I'll really have Y times Y times the fifth root of nine, which ultimately will be Y squared times the fifth root of nine. And that'll be the final answer simplified for the fifth root of nine, y to the tenth. So whenever you have your variables here, you can just take the exponent of the variable, divide it by your index, and that's how many will be on the outside. And in the next example, we'll look to see what happens if there's some left over. So let's slide down there right now and look to see what happens if we have some left over. In this case, we're taking the seventh root of a lot of variables, x to the seventh, y to the 21st, and z to the 10th. Okay, so using the rule that we just kind of talked about, we're going to divide by this index. So 7 divided by 7 makes 1. So on the outside, there'll be x to the power of 1. And there was no remainder. This 7 divided this 7 evenly. So that's it. So on the y, we have 21 divided by 7, and that'll give me 3. So y cubed. And there is no remainder because 7 divides 21 evenly. On the z, however, we have 10 divided by 7, which is going to give me 1, with how many left over? There will be a remainder, and in fact, the remainder will be 3, right? Because 10 divided by 7 is 1, remainder 3. So my final answer, then, is x, y cubed, z, times the seventh root, of z cubed. So that's what it looks like if you've got lots of variables in there because certainly we wouldn't want to write out 7x's, 21y's, 10z's, and then start taking groups of 7 of them. That's kind of ridiculous. So instead we can just use a little division property here and say 7 divided by 7 makes 1, 21 divided by 7 makes 3, and 10 divided by 7 makes 1 with the remainder of 3, and this remainder of 3 gets put back in here. Not enough to group into 7 and bring out, but just left over. So there were several examples of how to simplify a radical expression when the index value is other than 2.